your quality, being innovative. So these are things that work in line with your corporate culture. Corporate culture are ways in which the shared beliefs we have, norms, values that we share amongst ourselves as employees, as employers. This is what we call corporate culture. So your corporate culture will be based on what? Your values. So values are what? What you stand for as a business. The first one is your purpose. We're talking about purpose. Why do businesses exist? You have to communicate this to your stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? People that have interest in what we do or as a business, or people that have interest in our business activity. So you have to communicate to them why this business is in existence. That's the first thing. Purpose. Values. What you stand for as a business. Do you understand what values? We have to talk about standards. Standards and behavior. Standards and behavior. Stop like this. So, as a business, there should be moral. What is moral? The principle to know what is right and wrong. So, there should be ethics in whatever we do as well as a business. The first one we talked about was why we are in existence. You have to communicate these to your stakeholders. The second one is what you stand for as a business, which is in terms of your integrity, in terms of your quality, and in terms of innovation. The third one is standards and behavior. How you expect your expectation in terms of the attitude of your workers, what you think they should do, what the do's and the don'ts of the business, their ethics, the work ethics. Do you understand what standards and behavior is now? The do's and the don'ts in the business. You have to communicate this to them. Because you're talking about the mission, which we will get to by the mission statement. So the mission statement entails details about our operations. So the details about our operations will be the purpose, the values, the standards and behavior. Do you get it? So for the standards and behaviors, what did I say? Regarding the job, the ethics regarding the business. Is it clear? So, standard of behavior. This applies to the ethics of the operation. And for ethics, it is what moral behavior, the principle to know what is right and wrong, the do's and the don'ts.
things that you have to do to achieve that goal, it's your strategy. So here we go, we said, some mission statement we have right now in business to try to achieve its aims, its main objective. So a strategy is your analysis about how you achieve that goal. Here we want to get there in the next step is, how do we get there? We get there to these things. But most of it, most of all, we need a strategy. A strategy is a long-term plan towards achieving your goal. Not tactics. Tactics is a short plan, a short-term plan to achieve a goal. But a strategy is for the long term. So get to get the next step is you need a strategy from now, a plan for you to attain success with your objectives, for you to be able to make or for you to succeed. In your corporate objectives, you need to be what? To be smart. And when you talk about smart analysis, you're talking about you have to be specific, you have, it has to be measurable, the objective has to be equitable, it has to be realistic, it must be time specific. So I have to explain what at the time. So let's start with specific. For specific, what does it imply? Whatever your objectives are as a business, you have to clearly state it to your employees or the stakeholders. Whatever your objectives are, you have to clearly state them. You have to say them the way they are. Do you understand what specific is here? This is what we need to get done. These are the ways we have to get them done. Say it the way it is. That is specific. Do you understand what specific is here? Whatever your objective is, you have to state it clearly to your stakeholders. Is it clear? Two, measuring. Every objective must have an evidence of demonstration. Oh, if we have to achieve A and B, we can achieve A and B because of what we have. So look at what they call the measuring here. It said, involves evidence to demonstrate whether or not the objectives are actually being achieved. For this reason, most corporate objectives will have a financial quantifiable element, an element that can be spread by a number. This is because it makes it easier to measure the success of that project. So, if you are telling me I can achieve A, B, and C, you have to show me the evidence that you have before that states that you are able to achieve A, B, and C. Do you get what I'm saying there? Objectives must be measured. You must be able to quantify it. You must be able to say yes. When you put this and this and that together, we're going to achieve it. Do you understand measure again? It must be quantifiable. It must have figures that we can use as evidence. Do you get it? The first one is you have to be real, you have to be specific. You have to clearly state what your objectives are. Two, measure it. It has to be quantifiable. There must be evidence with numbers, with figures. That these things are possible or achievable. Is it clear? The third one, agree your work. Your workers must agree, your employees must agree on that mission statement. It's not just you telling them to get it done, 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 done. We must all agree that this is achievable. Do you understand? We must share the same belief, we must share the same culture. We must share the same attitude towards achieving it. That is agreed upon. So your corporate objective must be agreed upon by your workers, not only the business. The business must state it and the employees must accept it. Do you understand that agreement? Yeah. The fourth one, realistic. You must provide all the necessary resources to achieve the objective. Don't tell me to achieve A, B, and C. When you don't provide me the resources to achieve A, B, and C, I will not be able to achieve it. Do you understand where I'm speaking? You must provide the resources to achieve these objectives. Time specific. It must have a due date. Not like get it done. No. You started today, it must end after tomorrow. You are starting this year, it must end in the next five years. It must be time specific. If it is not time specific, that means it's not an objective. Do you understand? An objective must be specific, it must be clearly stated. An objective must be measurable, it must be quantifiable, it must have numbers. An objective must be agreed upon. Your workers, your 
where employees must accept, accept that this is what we have to achieve and, and it is achievable. Realistically, you must provide us resources to achieve these objectives. Time to explain, it must be stipulated, it must actually be number one. It shows commitment towards customers as if they bring without customer loyalty. Well, because you have a mission statement, you've told your customers that these are the things that you want, you want to achieve in the nearest future. These are your ways of operation. These are what you stand for as a business. All these things allow customers to trust you. And if your customers trust you, you have customer loyalty. What is customer loyalty? Customers will continue to buy from you. They will always return. They won't buy from your competitors. Everything they think about is your business. Everything they think about is your brand. Mm -hmm. That's what we mean by what? Customer loyalty. Because you gain their trust. Do you understand? So with your mission statement, it shows you can use it to show commitment towards your customers. Let your customers know that they are key to your business. Tell them what they stand to gain. Transact with you. So if they are with us, if they are buying from us, we will continue to provide you this service. These are the things you stand to gain. So they will trust you. And because they trust you, they will always return to buy from you. Do you understand? That's how the reality. The second one, it could bring together the whole world on corporate culture. When I talk about corporate culture, we're talking about the shared values, the shared norms, beliefs in the organization. In your mission statement, because you have stated that you have the purpose, you let the, business, the employees know about your purpose, you let your employees know about your values, you let the employees know about the standard behaviors, and also the strategy that you have put in place to achieve the goal. So because they know all these things, your employees, your workers, they will also want to fall in line with what you do. So they will share the same idea with you. They will share the same beliefs with you. They will share the same traditions, the same ways or models of working. They will share it with you. Because they know the only way to achieve the vision is to work through the vision statement. So whatever you say, whatever you do with them, they also work in line with it. They will be flexible to do it. Do you get it? So because you have stated this element in your mission statement, it allows you to use it as your most corporate culture. As your corporate culture, where is your corporate culture? Yeah, as a corporate culture. It allows you. And when we buy your corporate culture, it means the shared beliefs, the shared ideas within the organization. So I believe in that goal. I believe you believe in that object. She believes. So we are all sharing the same goals. So we'll be able to achieve it. So with your mission statement, it allows you to have a corporate culture. It allows you to show the commitment you have towards your customers. Is it clear? Any question about it?